Now the structure that you're seeing over here is the orbit. This is how the orbit looks when you look at the skull. We'll try to notice some important uh, landmarks on the orbit so that when we are going through the uh, various diseases, you can relate them to this picture over here and understand how the diseases spread. Okay. So the structure that you're seeing here, this is the superior orbital notch. And the whole like structure over here is our optic canal. This tiny structure, the opening over here is your superior orbital fissure which allows many important structures of the eye to pass through. Then the, just below this is our inferior orbital fissure. Okay, And this is the lacrimal fossa and this is the wetness tubercle over here. This obviously will be your infraorbital foramen. We have discussed in various classes all the structures passing through these. Now for just for your quick revision, you can have a look at these structures and where they are exactly located in the orbital wall. Now let's look at some interesting uh, features about the orbital wall. Before we proceed further, these are the things that you will be frequently asked in your exams. So the inferior wall is the most common wall to be fractured in a blowout fracture. Now, When you are involved in a fight with someone and they hit with a fist on the eye, that causes a blowout fracture. And the most commonly involved wall is the inferior wall of the orbit. Now why is it the inferior wall? It is because there is poor support because of the empty maxillary sinus that is over here, the air filled maxillary sinus doesn't provide much support to the inferior wall. So it's more predisposed to fractures. The image that you're seeing here, this side as you can make out has a normal appearance. Then this is the injured site where you're having a small uh, subconjunctival hemorrhage. Along with that, the striking feature that you're noticing is that there is no elevation over here. Okay, the right eye of the patient is elevating well, whereas the left eye is not elevating because the inferior rectus muscle is trapped between the fractured inferior wall of the orbit. Okay that is the mechanism this can also be asked sometimes and on the x-ray when you look at it you it appears as a teardrop sign okay just for your exam purpose teardrop sign is noticed in inferior orbital wall fracture then the medial wall is the thinnest wall and hence you can understand that it is more prone to infection from where do these infections occur now we know that this is the medial wall of the orbit right so as we have already studied, the ethmoidal sinus is located over here and the wall that separates the medial wall and the ethmoidal sinus is our lamina papyracea. Okay. And as the name suggests, it is as thin as a paper. So it easily allows the infections to pass through from the ethmoidal sinus to the medial wall. Next, the lateral wall is the thickest and the strongest wall all of these can be asked as questions so the inferior wall is most commonly fractured medial wall is the thinnest hence infections can enter through it into the eye or the orbit and then the lateral wall is the thickest and the strongest now let's look at this condition called traumatic optic neuropathy as we have seen in the first picture the optic canal lies just behind the lateral one third and the medial two-third of the eyebrow okay that is where my optic canal is located for surface marking so if i mark an area uh, between the lateral one-third and medial two-thirds of the eyebrow that is where my uh, optic canal will be located so what about this is that this is the commonest site of injury that causes traumatic optic neuropathy that is the optic nerve because the optic nerve passes through the optic canal it is the most common site for any neuropathy of the optic nerve occurring due to trauma. Now let's look at some inflammatory conditions of the orbit. The first one is our orbital cellulitis. As the name suggests, it is the infection of the orbit behind the orbital septum. 
So please note that when the inflammation occurs in front of the orbital septum, we are going to call it as preceptal cellulitis. That condition is called preceptal cellulitis whereas when the infection occurs behind the orbital septum that you are going to term it as orbital cellulitis. Now look at this picture you can see in this eye clearly the patient is having orbital cellulitis and from that you can deduce our next MCQ that is the most common cause of unilateral proptosis in a child is orbital cellulitis. Unilateral proptosis in a child is orbital cellulitis whereas a bilateral proptosis should make you think about neuroblastoma and metastasis okay that is about a bilateral proptosis neuroblastoma metastasis let's look at the same thing in an adult the answer is the same for both unilateral and bilateral proptosis it's thyroid eye disease also known as thyroid related of thalmopathy or graves of thalmopathy so most common cause of unilateral as well as bilateral proptosis in an adult is your thyroid eye disease okay now most common cause of orbital cellulitis is we have seen that the medial wall is the thinnest so you can understand from that that whenever the ethmoidal sinus is infected it lends some of it to the orbit causing orbital cellulitis and the most common organism is Staphylococcus aureus. Please make a note of this. Staph aureus is the most common organism causing orbital cellulitis. Now the clinical features which with, the, uh, with which the patient presents to us is the first one we have seen is proptosis then chemosis there is nothing but edema of the conjunctiva and there is a certain restriction of the ocular movements. These are the three clinical features. Of course it is associated with pain and uh, increased temperature at the local site okay next the treatment the drug of choice is intravenous vancomycin please make a note of this vancomycin intravenous is the drug of choice for orbital cellulitis and one of the most disastrous complication of this condition is our cavernous sinus thrombosis it's a very fatal condition. You really don't want your patient to land in this. Hello everyone. This is Dr. Sai Suguna, your mentor for ophthalmology at MediCoab. Thanks for watching the video. Now we have put such videos all together in our ophthalmology app. The trial version you can download from the link over here or in the description box below.